Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for January 5th. January 5th is, of course, the fifth day of the year in the Gregorian calendar. Most years, there are 360 days left remaining until the end of the year, but this is a leap year, so there are 361 days remaining until the end of 2020. Perihelion is the point during the year when the Earth is closest to the Sun, and it typically occurs in these first few days of January. Perihelion this year occurred today, January 5th at 1.47 a.m. Central Standard Time. Today's word is Rurban. Rurban is what's called a portmanteau. A portmanteau is a word coined by fusing two or more words together, such as motel from motor and hotel. Motor, hotel, motel. That's a portmanteau. Rurban is an adjective, which means having characteristics of both rural and urban life. I guess today we might call that suburban. The etymology of rurban is a blend of rural plus urban from the Latin rus, which means country, and herbs, which means city. And that's U-R-B-S, not H-E-R-B-S, herbs. The earliest documented use of the word verbin is 1915. Now, I just want to take a moment here to remind you that links to my research are included in the show notes. So if you're wondering where I got anything, check out those show notes. It'll probably take you right to it. I want to encourage you to go ahead and hit that like button. And when we're done, share this around your social media. And with that, we'll get started with the year 1531 when Pope Clement VII forbade King Henry VIII from remarrying. On January 5th, 1531, Pope Clement VII sent a letter to King Henry VIII of England forbidding him to remarry under penalty of excommunication. Henry, who was looking for a way out of his marriage to his his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, ignored the Pope's warning and went on to marry Anne Boleyn and five subsequent wives, <laughs> leading to his excommunication and one of the most significant schisms in the history of Christianity. Catherine was the daughter of Ferdinand and Isabella of Spain and the aunt of the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, in addition to being the widow of Henry's brother Arthur. Increasingly concerned by his failure to produce a legitimate heir, although he had publicly acknowledged an illegitimate son, Henry Fitzroy, Henry searched for a way to end his marriage in a manner consistent with the Catholic faith. This was necessary for political reasons, as a monarch violating Catholic doctrine risked disgrace and condemnation by the Pope. Henry was, by all accounts, a fairly devout Catholic. He was a known opponent of the Protestant Reformation that was taking shape on the continent, earning the title of Defender of the Faith from Pope Leo X for a treatise he wrote, attacking Martin Luther. Henry sent emissaries to the Pope in hopes of having his marriage annulled and even prevailed upon Clement to establish an ecclesiastical court in England to rule on the matter. Clement, however, had no intention of nullifying the marriage. In addition to his doctrinal objections, he was more or less a prisoner of Charles V at the time, and he was powerless to stand in the way of Charles' insistence that the marriage stand. Already infatuated with Anne Boleyn, who was known to have taken a keen interest in Luther and the Reformation, Henry had exhausted his options for remarrying within the church and decided excommunication was a fair price to pay for independence from the Pope and the potential for fathering an heir. Henry banished Catherine from his court and married Anne secretly in 1532 and then publicly the following year. And in doing so, he fundamentally altered the course of Christian and European history. Subsequent to his remarriage, Henry issued a string of decrees that removed his kingdom from papal rule, ending the supremacy of the Catholic Church and creating the Church of England. Although the new church was at first extremely similar to Roman Catholicism, these moves made Henry and his successors absolute rulers who did not answer to the Pope. England joined a number of German states as well as Sweden in rejecting Catholicism, drawing battle lines for centuries of religious, political, and military conflict to follow. And to follow that story, we have one in 1643, the first divorce in the colonies. Anne Clark of the Massachusetts Bay Colony was granted a divorce 
divorce from her absent and adulterous husband, Dennis, by the Quarter Court of Boston, Massachusetts. In a signed and sealed affidavit presented to John Winthrop Jr., the son of the colony's founder, Dennis Clark admitted to abandoning his wife, with whom he had two children, for another woman, with whom he had another two children. He also stated his refusal to return to his original wife, thus giving the Puritan court no option but to punish Clark and grant a divorce to his wife, Anne. Moving on, American general and explorer Zebulon Pike. Yes, he is the Pike after whom Pikes Peak in Colorado is named. He was born on this date in 1779. Now, he died at the age of 34, killed in action in 1813 during the War of 1812. American traitor and British Brigadier General Benedict Arnold enjoyed his greatest success as British commander on January 5th, 1781. Arnold's 1,600 largely loyalist troops sailed up the James River at the beginning of January, eventually landing in Westover, Virginia. Leaving Westover on the afternoon of January 4th, Arnold and his men arrived at the virtually undefended capital city of Richmond the next afternoon. And so, in 1781, Richmond, Virginia was burned by British naval forces led by Benedict Arnold which is why the name Benedict Arnold equals traitor. January 5th, 1855, King Camp Gillette was born. He's the founder of the Gillette Company, maker of safety razors. He lived to the age of 77. On January 5th, 1895, French officer Alfred Dreyfus was condemned for allegedly passing military secrets to the Germans. He was stripped of his rank in a humiliating public ceremony in the courtyard of Paris École Militaire. The Jewish artillery captain, convicted on flimsy evidence in a highly irregular trial, began his life sentence on the notorious Devil's Island prison in French Guiana four months later. On January 5th, 1914, the Ford Motor Company announced an eight-hour workday and a minimum daily wage of $5 in salary plus bonuses, subject to restrictions and imposed character standards. On this day in 1916, the first conscription bill was introduced in British Parliament. With the Great War edging into its third calendar year, British Prime Minister Herbert Asquith introduced the first military conscription bill in his country's history to the House of Commons on January 5th, 1916. Conscription means compulsory enrollment. And in this context, it's basically a form of draft. They'd had decent volunteer response, men enlisting for military service, but they're three years into the war now and they could see they were gonna need way more. So they instituted this military conscription bill. On this day in 1919, the German Workers' Party, which would become the Nazi Party, was founded in Munich. On January 5th, 1920, the New York Yankees Major League Baseball Club announced its purchase of the heavy-hitting outfielder George Herman Babe Ruth from the Boston Red Sox for the sum of $125,000. That's a decent amount of money now. It was a whole lot of money back then. He wasn't happy about it either, but what are you going to do? <clears throat> On this day in 1925, Nellie Taylor Ross of Wyoming became the first female governor in the United States. On January 5th, 1933, construction began on the Golden Gate Bridge as workers began excavating 3.25 million cubic feet of dirt for the structure's huge anchorages. Now, let me tell you, that is a lot of dirt. American lawyer and politician and 30th president of the United States, Calvin Coolidge, died on this date in 1933 at the age of 60. On this day in 1944, the Daily Mail became the first major London newspaper to be published on both sides of the Atlantic. On January 5, 1945, Japanese pilots received their first order to become kamikaze, which means divine wind in Japanese. The suicidal blitz of kamikazes revealed Japan's desperation in the final months of World War II. Most of Japan's top pilots were dead, but the youngsters needed little training to take the planes full of explosives and crash them into ships. At Okinawa, they sank 30 ships and killed almost 5,000 Americans. On this day, 
Tuesday in 1949, President Truman delivered his Fair Deal speech. He announced in his State of the Union address that every American has a right to expect from our government a fair deal. Truman announced his plans for domestic policy reforms, including a national health insurance, public housing, civil rights legislation, and federal aid to education. He advocated an increase in the minimum wage, federal assistance to farmers, and an extension of Social Security, as well as urging the immediate implementation of anti-discrimination policies in employment. Truman argued for an ambitious legal agenda based on the policies first articulated by his predecessor, Franklin D. Roosevelt. On January 5, 1957, in response to the increasingly tense situation in the Middle East, President Dwight D. Eisenhower delivered a proposal to Congress that called for a new and more proactive U.S. policy in the region. The Eisenhower Doctrine, as the proposal soon came to be known, established the Middle East as a Cold War battlefield. On this day in 1970, the bodies of dissident Union leader Joseph Jock Yablonski, his wife and daughter, were discovered in their Clarksville, Pennsylvania farmhouse by Yablonski's son, Kenneth. The family had been dead for nearly a week, killed on New Year's Eve by killers hired by the United Mine Workers UMW Union leadership. Yablonski's murder eventually brought down the whole Union leadership and ended the widespread corruption of the Union under UMW President Tony Boyle. On January 5, 1972, President Nixon launched the Space Shuttle Program. He signed a bill authorizing $5.5 million in funding to develop a space shuttle. The space shuttle represented a giant leap forward in the technology of space travel, designed to function more like a cost-efficient reusable airplane than a one-use-only rocket launch capsules. The shuttle afforded NASA pilots and scientists more time in space with which to conduct space-related research. NASA launched Columbia, the first space shuttle, in 1981. Now, here in the northern hemisphere, January 5th is middle of winter. We're, we're right in the middle of winter, getting ready to go into the coldest part of our year here. But in the southern hemisphere, it's summertime. <laughs> And so it is that on January 5th, 1974, the warmest reliably measured temperature within the Antarctic Circle of 59 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 degrees Celsius, was recorded at Vanda Station. On January 5th, 1976, Khmer Rouge leader Pol Pot announced a new constitution, changing the name of Cambodia to Kampuchea and legalizing its communist government. During the next three years, his brutal regime sent the nation back to the Middle Ages and was responsible for the deaths of an estimated one to two million Cambodians. Pol Pot's inept attempt at building a peasant-based agrarian utopia became a nightmarish reign of terror and genocide. Cambodians were forced into the countryside to work in communes. Anyone with education or wealth was killed and schools, newspapers, hospitals, culture, religion, and private property were abolished. Tens of thousands of Cambodians died of starvation, while countless others succumbed to disease and forced labor or were murdered. Oh, goodness. On January 5th, 1998, Sonny Bono died in a skiing accident. He was on vacation with his family in South Lake Tahoe, California, and uh, they'd been skiing together most of the day, but then he went off by himself, and later on then, uh, his wife reported him missing, and they found him in the trees. Don't ski the trees. Just don't. It's too dangerous. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today, and uh, again, links to my research are included in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And share this video on your social media, which includes emailing it to your friends. <laughs> I'm creeping up on 100 subscribers, and I'd really like to catch that pretty soon. Always one more step. <laughs> and while you're looking at videos, go check out my other channel, 8 Susquehanna. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Some things just can't be done. <laughs> Barking dog. All right. Back to work. Okie dokie, Smokey. That's a lot of words. I'm going to have to look at that.
who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. Did not a man. See, this is what happens when we're not scripted. <laughs> anyway, um, this is a pretty amazing app, and uh, I'm experimenting with it a little bit. And I'm going to stop recording now and see what it looks like. This is why I don't do live shows. <laughs>